Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to the Forgotten City where we have finally cleared the path to the baths. We finally have a bow, which we definitely need for reasons that we definitely don't have. And I guess, I guess let's just go see how this all turns out. Hey, hey, guess what? I take it you've cleared the way to the baths? Yes, me. I, I did it with telepathy. Closely. We can't have people thinking we're bathing together. Well, not telepathy so much as, you know, I, I use my mind to hit a man with a rock. Whatever you call that around here. Alright, this is me not following her too closely. Okay. <clears throat> This game has the same problem that a lot of video games have, where, like, your walking walking and running speeds are just, like, slightly awkwardly desynced from those of all other characters in the world, so you can't really, like, smoothly follow anyone. Yeah, I'm getting that. But we ran into this problem originally when we were um, following Galerius to, to Sentius, where... Walking was way too, way too fast, so we had to just keep, like, tapping. Okay, she's gonna go all the way around to the... Must you? Must you, though? We could not have talked about this over there. All right, you're here. You were asking how I knew the young woman you met by the river was wearing a hood. Here, look down at the bottom of the baths. It's a little hard to make out in this light. If only we could see. Oh, what a marvelous lamp. But do you see it? Somebody waking up by a river in a forest to find a hooded figure with a coin. It's just as you described it. Only your pronunciation is a little off. The name you heard wasn't Karen. It was C-H-A-R-O-N. As in Charon. The ferryman of the dead. Hold on a second. There ain't no. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. Who, in Never exchange mind. for the right coin, helps the souls of the newly deceased cross the Styx, the river that separates the land of the living from the land of the dead. When I dragged you out of the river, I thought you were never going to wake up. I checked your pockets for ID, but all I found was some loose change. Feels like I've spent my whole life in a dead end job with an endless commute. Yeah, no, I got it the first time. Sorry if I sounded cagey. It's just that. I don't always get the best reactions when I introduce myself. My name's... Karen. I'm so sorry, my friend. I'm so, so sorry. I take it you know what this means. They really thought that they, they wove that in subtly and they would have to replay the audio to you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I get it. It's just like it doesn't... <laughs> the problem is it doesn't matter. I'm afraid so. It's all starting to make sense. All these people whose last memory was running from the fires toward the river. It seems none of them escaped with their lives after all. Perhaps we should be grateful they don't remember their final moments. It also tells us that the golden rule is the work of Pluto, the god of the underworld, and why his epithet has always been father of riches. I know it's a lot to take in, and you look as if you have questions, so I'll try to answer them if I can. How long do we... Hmm. This might be a thing with my memory. Were we told by anyone how long they had been here? I'm trying to remember. Because, like, it was very easy to figure out, even with my knowledge of... Uh, of Greek myth and Ro Ro Greek and Roman myth, which was not, you know, obviously not very much. <clears throat> so it just feels like it seems like Livia figured it out, and for some reason, even though it's like, it doesn't really seem like that big of a deal, honestly, uh, it it completely shattered her. Again, this is this is what I was saying. Like the game is setting a trap for itself, and then it just walked right into it. Um, but like. Someone else should have figured this out, is my point. In fact, like a lot of people, this this should be common knowledge. It's remarkably obvious. But if everybody else has just been here like a day or two, you know, they don't have the benefit of the time loop. I don't know. 
Uh, hey, if this is the underworld, why is there like 20 people here? Good question. Let's see. In the stories, Charon would always require a coin as payment for passage across the river. But that never made any sense to me. What does an ancient immortal being need with coins? In our case, it seems Charon didn't take the coins we had. He or she merely checked we had one in our possession. So, maybe there's something special about the coins each of us had on us. And that might explain why we wound up here, but so many others did not. And why, why the assassin needed to have exactly one coin on him. Boy, it sure is a good thing he died with exactly one coin on him. All right, uh, were you trying to keep this from me? If she honestly tells me that she hadn't quite put it together herself, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be very disappointed in her. No, I mean, I had my suspicions, especially after Livia's ramblings, but I would never have figured it out without your help. I promise you. But why? Like, what did I do that was, okay. So we're dead, huh? That was my first thought too. In the old stories, the underworld was where the souls of the deceased were taken. Yeah, but people come but back. But it was also possible for the living to reach it without dying, if they were particularly fearless. So I'm afraid I don't know. Well, see, you just said you're afraid, so that's so that's probably not what's happening. Uh, what can you tell me about Karen? Oh, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting you're not from here. If you were Roman or even Greek. You would know these or just stories. liked video games. Each of them is slightly different. Whether the storyteller was Plato, Homer, Virgil, or Ovid. Or Supergiant. But they always involve the souls of the dead, meeting a grim ferryman named Charon on the bank of a river. It was said that he'd help the new arrival cross, only if they could pay him with a coin, an obol. That's why it was once our custom to bury our loved ones with a coin in their mouths. Charon's obol, we called it. Of course, Imaginative. an obol was a kind of Greek coin, because we inherited this knowledge from the Greeks. Okay, and why didn't you all recognize Charon immediately, then? To be fair, the ferryman isn't exactly as the poets described. And he, she, they, they seem to appear to different people in different guises. You say you saw a young woman named Karen with a hood. And I once heard Kabash mention a stranger in a ram headdress named Kerti. And Rufius described meeting a stranger named Kamut Tabal wearing an eagle headdress. But whatever form this stranger took, they were always wearing a hood of some sort, and their name always began with a K sound. I suspect the only way you'll solve this riddle is if your paths cross again. That story, like... If it didn't have to be Karen the whole time, then why was it Karen for us, right? Like, it, this whole reveal works way better if the woman we meet has a name that isn't Karen, right? If, if her name is Chrissy or some other name that starts with a hard K sound. And so we fit the pattern of, oh, it was not recognizably Karen until we were told it was Karen, but like the signs match up with everybody. Hmm. Uh, the, I've probably said what I need to say about the writing in the game. It's fine. Uh, yep, that's all the questions I have. We know where we are. We have to figure out what to do about it. If we don't want to be cast into gold for eternity. I have an idea. We don't have much to go on, except the old stories. I remember four in particular about heroes in the underworld. Hercules, the demigod and son of Jupiter. Orpheus, a Thracian poet. Sisyphus, a king of Ephyra. And Aeneas, a Trojan hero. Hercules was able to leave the underworld because he cowed its god with his strength. Sisyphus and Orpheus both relied on their wits instead. They persuaded the goddess of the underworld, Proserpina, to help them escape. And finally, Aeneas was able to escape with the help of a spirit guide, who led him through a secret gate. So it seems you have two options. To confront the god of the underworld head on, or find a way to escape with the help of Proserpina or some other guide. I mean, okay. That was phrased as three options, but I get what you mean. Uh, 
Well, I mean, we have a spirit guide, obviously. Uh, and I don't have either strength or wits, so, so it seems like that's the way we ought to take. Uh, yeah, hey, I've noticed you seem uncomfortable calling the god of the underworld by his name. Why is that? All Romans try to avoid saying it, and the reason is quite simple. He might hear us. You may refer to him as Pluto, if you wish, but you'll only be calling attention to yourself. Do so at your own peril. So maybe we have to try to, like, sneakily avoid saying the name when we're talking to the guy in the cavern below. Just call him the god of the underworld. Uh, I mean, can't we just escape the way we can? I I'm going to ask her, but, like, it's obvious why we can't do that, right? Because it's way up there and we don't know how to open the trap door from below. It's a reasonable question. But the problem is, this place is fairly well designed to keep us here. There's no way to climb up the shaft. And even if you could build a ladder big enough, just trying it would break the golden rule. We know that, thanks to the writings left behind by those who've tried. All right. It was important to ask because she might have said something that would be valuable in some other way. Uh, why don't you tell me more about escaping with the help of a guide? As I mentioned... Both Orpheus and Sisyphus were said to have persuaded Proserpina to help them escape, and Aeneas was guided to the exit. The problem is, those are the stories of a poet, a self-aggrandizing king, and a brawler about their own heroic deeds, so they should be taken with a grain of salt. That's First, true, you can't trust a poet. What we do know about her is, well, it's a grim tale. It's said... The god of the underworld abducted and dragged her here against her will, forcing her into marriage. So she she might be willing to work against him to help us then. You're saying there's enmity. If the stories are true, then I suppose so. The problem is, how do we communicate with her without being noticed by her captor? Leaving that aside for a moment, there is also the possibility of a spirit guide. I don't suppose you've come across one of those in your travels? Uh, well, I do hear the female statues whispering to me every now and then. I'm just going to admit that, huh? Truly? And you're only bringing this up now? Then again... Yeah, I thought I, I was keeping it a secret, worried, too. I'd think you were as mad as Navia. Can you tell me more? Is it the same voice? What kinds of thing does it say? Uh, yeah, it is always the same voice, and she's helpful, if a little cryptic. Fascinating. Perhaps she is a benevolent spirit. Or perhaps... Hmm. Perhaps you're hearing the voice of Proserpina herself. That would seem to be the if obvious she has indeed uh, conclusion. Been abducted, it would make sense for her to speak in cryptic whispers to avoid detection. Tell me, has she told you anything that might lead you to the way out? I mean, she told me to talk to you. Oh, I see. Well, let me know if you hear anything that might be a thread through this labyrinth. Uh, okay, I guess we have to say each thing here. Shh! Is everyone so blunt where you're from? Oh! That option would be the boldest, but also the only way to learn the truth about the Golden Rule, and maybe even put an end to it. As I said, Hercules managed to overpower the god of the underworld, but he was a demigod. Forgive my candor, but you are no Hercules. What if I had a gun, though? Listen, I have a few tricks up my sleeve, presumably. I don't, I don't know what they are right now, but I could develop some. I'll admit, you do seem different to anyone I've ever met. And even that lamp of yours looks like something Prometheus might have stolen from the gods. So, if you want to confront him... I'll help you as much as I can. Who knows? Perhaps your name will be uttered in the same sentence as Hercules one day. But first, you'd need an audience with you-know-who. And for that, you'll need to enter the great temple overlooking the city. The problem is, the door has been sealed shut for as long as I've lived here. And there doesn't even seem to be a keyhole. I suspect the answer lies in the desecrated obelisk in front of it. I'm not sure if you noticed, but there are four plaques missing from its base. It looks as though somebody, or a series of somebodies, forcibly removed them, 
and in doing so, dishonored and angered our divine keeper. If you could recover and replace all four of those missing plaques, I imagine he might be willing to receive an audience again. That's a very video gamey solution. What can you tell me about this obelisk? It's the towering stone monument with four sides and a pyramid shaped head that stands before the great temple. A dedication to the god of this place. You'll find them all over Rome. But of course they were looted from Egypt many years ago. It seems one of them made its way here too, although how is a mystery. However, this one is unusual in that each of the four sides is decorated in a different style. Roman, Greek, Egyptian, and another I don't recognize. That means you will need to recover four different plaques. Yeah, no, I follow. Roman, Greek, Egyptian, and a fourth, a mystery plaque. This game um, really does not expect you to have any thoughts of your own or ever figure out anything yourself. It's just going to tell you absolutely everything that's happening. And it, I do find it a little grating. All right, where might I find the Roman plaque? Good question. To answer that, we first need to ask who would have defaced the obelisk in the first place. It would have had the god's name engraved into it, so it may be that whoever desecrated it wanted that name to be forgotten, and there's only one group of people I know of who might want to do that. There's a cult in Rome that often argued there is only one true god, theirs, of course. They've been known to start fires as well as deface religious monuments whose existence challenged their beliefs. If I were you, I'd go looking for them. Of course, they've all been in hiding since the fire last year, so finding them won't be easy. But I did hear a rumor they have a secret shrine somewhere in the city. Perhaps, if you could find that, you might be able to recover the Roman plaque. I wonder if you took the gun... I wonder if you can use the gun to open doors. Like, in theory, there there probably isn't a lot of construction in this place that can stand up to uh, you shoot it with a gun. So I wonder if you can just shoot through the locking mechanisms of those doors. My guess is probably not, but you really ought to be able to. All right, where would I find the Greek plaque? Please don't say Greece. I don't know. But perhaps you should begin your search with the local Greek fellow, Georgius. His store is in the forum. Okay, interesting that that says ask Dooley about the Greek plaque. How about the Egyptian plaque? Perhaps Kabash, our Egyptian resident, would be able to tell us. Unfortunately, he disappeared weeks ago. But I did hear Aurelia is peddling rumors about him at the tavern. So perhaps you could talk to her or just take a look in his room. We already know that's bullshit. All right, where would I find the mystery plaque? I'm afraid you're on your own with that one. But perhaps the goddess will help guide you to it when the time is right. All right, I guess I'm ready to get started. All right. I would suggest not discussing this with anyone. The best we can do for them is to let them remain oblivious for as long as possible. As for Livia... It seems she's been shouldering the weight of this terrible secret all this time. Perhaps it would comfort her to know she's not alone. Yeah, but if our primary concern is safety and like like secrecy, uh, maybe it's not a good idea to let Livia know that other people understand what's going on, because isn't she then just going to let that information out? All right, you know what? In any case, time is of the essence. So you'd best begin. May Fortuna guide you. Although you may not need her with Proserpina on your side. Whoosh. We have much better cardio in the future. Okay, that's a new whisper for sure. Very 
slick, very slick. So, some stuff got uh, got laid in there that was like um, a little spoilery, I thought. Where it was just like, hey, you definitely need to talk to Maliolus about that missing Roman plaque. And like, it's pretty obvious who was meant, but like... You know, just let the player let the player do like a little bit of figuring. All right, let's let's go. Hold on a second here. Hey, you. There you go. It's gone. There you are. Greetings. I'm George. Yeah, no, I know. He gladdens me. Right, I haven't talked to him on this loop yet. I know, I know. You want to know where I'm from, but I really want to ask you some questions. Finally, our character is feeling the same urgency that I am. My friend, your words intrigue me more and more. But yes, very well. Ask me what you will. Do you know where I might find a Greek plaque? This is an insane thing to ask, I recognize, but... And in a city full of Romans, you are asking me? Because I am Greek. Let me tell you something about Greeks and Romans. Yeah, go ahead. My name is Georgios, yes. But the Romans, they do not care. They hear me say Georgios, and they think, Ah, he must mean Georgius. Good Roman name. They do this all the time. They see us worshipping Zeus, they copy us, but call him Jupiter. They take Hades and call him Pluto, Persephone, Proserpina. I am flattered that they copy our ideas, but why must they change the names? Do they want credit for making it all up? Do they want to forget where it came from? At first, I pull my hair out. After a while, I give up and I become Georgius the Roman. I accept the world is Roman. Plus, I have no hair left to pull. I was going to say, my it's point is thorough. This. If you want to know who stole an old Greek name, look no further than the sticky fingered Romans. The plague you seek was pilfered from a collection of old Greek relics by none other than Dooley. Uh, he cannot help it. Like a typical Roman, he likes shiny things, especially those that once belonged to my people. And besides, it makes him happy. So I say, let him keep it. I believe he still has it with him, in his cell, just opposite the Temple of Demeter. Okay, uh, I think you have a visitor. I hope that our paths cross again soon, my friend. Okay, very normal and natural behavior all around. And again here, like the game the game telling us outright that we should talk to Dooley about the thing before we had the information from Yorius. That's just like uh very Hello? Very Hello. strange. Uh yeah, we have Hey listen, about that Greek plaque in your cell? Do you like it? It's shiny, isn't it? It makes me happy just looking at it. Okay, uh <laughs> that's unfortunate because I do need it. But, if I gave it to you, then I w wouldn't have it anymore, and I'd be sad. I have lots of shiny objects. Uh, alright, what's it gonna take for you to give it to me? Um, well... Okay, yep, that's what I thought. I, I do not have time to listen to your delivery of these lines. Alright, let me talk to the magistrate about getting you out of here. Already. No, I know. Like... Yep. All right, well, all I need, etc. Yeah. Vote for Galerius. Yep, okay, we know how to do it. Bye-bye. So, I guess let's go, let's go drop the, okay. um, let's go drop the blackmail on Maliolus here. My dude is he is he has gone walkabout. Uh Mr. Maliolus. Let's just go ahead and quick save in case I screw this up terribly. You again. What is it now? Uh hey, you have any idea where I might find a Roman plaque? Look, if I had a Roman plaque in my possession, I'd be happy to sell it to you, but I don't, so I can't. Okay, fair enough. Uh, by the way... <laughs> My name is Marcus Maliolus Gurgis. You seem to have confused me with someone else. 
Well, you have one green eye and one blue eye, just like the description in this execution order from Emperor Nero. You... you mean my heterochromia? I am guilty of nothing more than having different colored eyes. And I'm hardly the only person with the condition. Alexander the Great had it too, as it happens. Well, I don't I think like this order think is for his execution, though. The way the gods though. have chosen to mark a natural-born ruler. Nothing more. Uh, apparently this Quinctius also suffers from delusions of grandeur. <laughs> well, I am not suffering from any delusions, as today's election will firmly establish. All right, I can't prove it to you yet, but I will. Unlikely, because it simply isn't true. Now, was there something else you wanted? Well, I would like you to withdraw from the election, but I probably can't get there just yet. I trust you can see your... All right, we're gonna need we're gonna need some kind of actual evidence. Maybe if we talk to Claudia, I can't imagine she's going to be terribly forthcoming, given how the last conversation went. Yeah, I'm talking to her from technically I'm still outside the room. Why so are you still here? My hope is that. Hey, how would you like some help getting back at Maliolus? Hmm, an intriguing proposition. Go on. Uh, well, I don't think he is who he says he is. Hmm. Perhaps you're not as silly as those clothes make you look. What makes you say that? I spent a lot of time picking out these clothes because they are exactly as silly as I am. But all right. Uh, oh, it's just a hunch. I was hoping we could figure out his true identity together. You know, I may have. The very thing you're looking for. Wow, that worked. Some time ago, when he still cared for me, he wrote me a love letter. Only, he used the wrong name. Now, addressing one's wife by the wrong name is not unheard of among philandering Romans. But in this case, the name he got wrong was his own. Yes, that was clear I from the last thing him you said. about it. And he stammered through some incoherent response. I let it go, eventually, and yet... Questions have lingered in the back of my mind ever since. But... Wait a minute. Why exactly are you helping me? <laughs> I just really don't like Maliolus. You can, this cannot be unusual for you. Uh, well, I want to force him to withdraw from the election. To withdraw? Listen, I may not be Penelope to his Ulysses, but to ruin his plans to become a magistrate? You must think me quite mad. I've heard enough. Get out of here at once. Domitius, come quickly. We're being robbed. Okay, well, it turns out lying is not against the golden rule. We could do, I we need could to do call the Domitius? load. Uh, yeah, okay. I wonder if we'll have to. Because, like, the thing is... Neither of those other options seemed like they could possibly have any valuable outcome, right? Like, they certainly shouldn't. And I wouldn't reckon that this information is enough for me to press Maliolus with, but maybe if I just make reference to the fact that I know it, he'll panic? Let's find out before I before I potentially reload the uh, the quick save. So I want you out of this election. Um, no, never what? mind. You're Quinctius. You get this thing. Uh, okay. Unlock. I trust you can. Yeah, threatening to kill him is not going to do anything. Because he'll just point out that I cannot, in fact, do that. Uh... Could I get on the roof from... No, it doesn't look like there would be another way. <laughs> the old levitate up the stones maneuver. The light sourcing here is very strange, but I don't think it's actually meaningful. Well, we could go we could go talk to the old man now. 
We we know the first answer to his question. But I guess let's um let's see about the temple. Isn't the great temple majestic? Uh sure. So the obelisk in question she said in front of does she mean down here where actually where actually is this thing maybe maybe it's inside I don't actually see okay hold on it's the note from Nevia yep there's definitely some sound in there. Something's getting smashed. And I have this bow now. But like... But like, why did I want a bow? Let's see if we can piece this together. One of the, one of the few things the game has actually left us to figure out. Where was... Where's the quest that wanted us to have a bow? Let's see... Yeah, asking, talking to Nevia obviously could be very helpful. The plaques. Yeah, this I'm not so worried about. Okay. Uh, how do I how do I use the bow? I have this bow now, and I have a ton of arrows. Um. Hmm. There, okay, there we go. The quest to acquire a bow came up while we were here, right? Oh, hey. Huh. So maybe the the idea here is that we will, again, traverse via plant life, which is not a thing that we currently know how to do. Maybe we do want to go just talk to the old man real quick. Let's see if we can get anything out of him. Because I am... Uh, I am awfully curious what his deal is. I did really appreciate Georges's, uh... <laughs> Listen, if you want to know what happened to a missing Roman thing, or a missing Greek thing, ask a sticky fingered Roman like his characterization is on point at least the the overall writing I still think is is pretty south of mediocre but there there are some good touches here ah, and there you've returned indeed ah you've returned I know you just said that everything I know yep what okay that has all right excellent I see you are indeed quite astute very few come to that realization before their time in the sun is over. Now, will you join me in a friendly Socratic dialogue? What, what is so friendly about that? Fine, if I have to. Good enough for me. Now, let me begin with a question. Would you say you know the difference between right and wrong? Uh, okay, so... This might be an interesting conversation if it were a conversation. However, it's a dialogue tree in a video game. So I'm trying, I'm trying to think of like where, where I believe they are going with this. Listen, I'm not sure. It's a complex question. You are an overthinker too. We're the same then. That's probably why I became a philosopher. But if you struggle with right and wrong normally, then down here with the golden rule, surely your struggle can only have become more difficult. Yeah, I guess so. Well, that's reassuring. And the truth is, you're not alone. 
You see, out there in the world, being uncertain about right and wrong was acceptable, because our mistakes rarely had consequences. So we would tell lies and bend rules and turn a blind eye and rationalize, and yet still find a way to think of ourselves as good people. But under the golden rule, morality matters. The slightest wrongdoing could result in a mass execution. So to navigate this maze, we would have to be certain about the difference between right and wrong. Wouldn't you agree? I might argue that morality and right and wrong don't enter into the scenario as you, as you have described it and as we have been living it at all, which I guess is the bottom option. <laughs> Whose version of right and wrong? That is an excellent question, and it leads directly to my next line of inquiry. So let me ask you this. Is there one system of morality which is always perfectly correct, which you could follow in every situation and always do the right thing? So you're sort of disregarding the thing I said because you are asking a question that is premised on the idea of there being a simple definition of right to which we can agree. Uh... <laughs> No, I don't think so. Are you sure? Or is it possible that humans simply haven't figured out the right system yet? I'm saying I think there's no such thing as a correct morality, but again, I think like we're eliding a much more important question that lays at the root of this whole thing. So is it up to each of us to decide what right and wrong mean to us individually? Or must we simply follow the laws and customs of whichever community we're in? Listen, man, all we're all trying to do is avoid violence out here. Uh, so for each of us to decide what right and wrong mean to us individually. So, like, who do I think, who do I think this dude is, right? He's fishing for something in particular. And again, to some extent, like, I, like, I almost want to quibble around about the meaning of the word need. In the case we're in right now, we definitely need to follow the laws and customs of our community because we die if we don't do that. Um... I would ask for clarification. Does he mean generally, or does he mean, like, right now? I think broadly we need to decide for ourselves. So if a man feels that stoning to death his unfaithful wife is right, then is it right? My dude, again, we really have to talk about the meaning of right. I agree. But why? Didn't you just say right and wrong depends on the individual? Ah. <sighs> I did, but only because I d wasn't and allowed to say anything else. To you, it is the mark of a civilized person to change their position when presented with a superior argument. Yeah, that's definitely what's happening here. Are you are you going somewhere with this? My point is this. I don't think anyone alive truly knows any hard and fast rules about right and wrong. Okay. If there is one thing I have observed about rules, it is that virtuous people do not need them, and evil people will always find a way around them. And so we must accept our limitations, and the sad truth that no human society will ever achieve the utopia for which it strives. In mathematics, we would call it an asymptote, a line that can be approached but never reached. Because the only way to create a utopia is with the ever-present threat of force such as the Golden Rule. This and no other is the root from which a tyrant springs when he first appears as a protector. And life under tyranny is no utopia at all. There's so much arguing I want to do. I, I really wish... <laughs> I really wish this conversation wasn't happening in a thinly written video game. Uh... Yeah, okay, but, like, we need to define so many terms here. Like, what does he mean when he says utopia? Because we don't even really understand his conception of right and wrong, especially since half the time right is in quotation marks, and... I... agree? I'm gonna say sure, why not? I'm refusing to, to commit to this conversation with any kind of gusto. <laughs> I admit, I am talking a lot. And saying very little. I'm just excited to have company. In any case, 
Thank you for humoring an old man. I would be happy to answer your questions. Cool, great. Uh, what do you know about uh, what do you know about my man Kabash? I will tell you, but you may find him hostile. To prepare for your encounter, there are certain things you must know. Very few know this, but before the Romans came to this city, it was once entirely Greek. Yeah, there's a lot of that going around. The temples and the people. When the Romans came in typical fashion. They claimed it as their own, built over everything that could be built over and renamed the things that could not. Thus, the shrine of Persephone became the shrine of Proserpina. And when they found an obelisk bearing the name Hades, they tore it off and replaced it with Pluto instead. And the city's dwindling Greek residents, witnessing this compulsive Roman conquest, decided to preserve what they could of their heritage. They gathered their art and valuables, secreted them away through the Temple of Demeter, uh. and hid them here, out of reach of the Romans. I don't, I don't think he quite meant secreted. Uh, okay. Yeah, sure. What does this have to do with Kabash? I'm getting to that. You see, it was among these old Greek relics that I found the thing you seek. An even older plaque bearing an Egyptian inscription. And what did it say? We had no idea until years later, when the first of my friends began to die. As a result of their deaths, we began to dig catacombs branching off from this cavern to lay them to rest. We extended the tunnel so far that we accidentally discovered another, an even older tunnel, which somebody had gone to great lengths to keep hidden. Suddenly, it made sense why there was an out-of-place Egyptian plaque among our people's possessions. You see, we proud Greeks had thought the Romans beasts for stealing and corrupting our heritage. But it turns out this game has been going on much longer than any of us imagined. I think it is best you head through the catacombs and follow Kabash's trail. I definitely agree. Uh, what, what is it that is in there, though? There are certain things you must see for yourself. You Take are this key profoundly unhelpful. To open the gate. Okay, I, ch I changed my mind. That was helpful. Thank you. Uh, do you want to tell me your story at what I assume is at great length? You mean, how did I end up living alone in this cave with nothing but these relics of the past for company? It's a long story. Never mind. Ah. <sighs> Very well, then. You happen to know a way out of here? Huh. If I did, would I be living like this? It's a very reasonable answer, frankly. And what do you think about the Golden Rule? Did we not discuss it at length already? Oh, I see. You're toying with me. Ha. I mean, we sort of discussed it. You kind of talked yourself in a circle and didn't really say anything, though. All right, fine. Tell me your... I end yeah, up yeah, yeah. The... Tell me the thing. I was a quarrelsome young man. At 19, I left Corinth for Rome to study rhetoric at one of her finest academies. So I could argue more forcefully. Oh, he's a debate then I used to enjoy... What a surprise. ...sparring with everyone I could. And I was good. One night, I found myself in a tavern in an argument with a drunk mercenary. It became heated. He drew a gladius... And I won the argument, but lost my life. I woke up on the banks of the Styx at a campfire opposite Karen. Of course, I tried to persuade her to let me return, but even with all my skill, I failed. I settled in, made friends, and learned what I could, quickly realizing our little community faced certain death under the Golden Rule. So I began looking for a place to hide underground. Fortunately, I found this place waiting for me. You see, I was not the first to take refuge here. I returned to my friends above, persuaded them to join me, and twelve of us descended for the last time to live out our days hidden from Hades' tyranny. That doesn't make any sense, though, because Hades is a god... And his whole deal is being underground. Why would you think that you would be more hidden here than you were up above? 
I, okay. Hades? You mean Pluto? No, he doesn't mean that. They're one and the same. The Romans call him Pluto. But long before that, my people called him Hades. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna ask all the dumb questions, unfortunately, because you can never tell what's actually gonna turn out to have an important answer behind it. Why can't you return to the surface? My generation was wiped out, turned to gold many years ago. My friends and I were able to avoid the same fate by hiding down here. I think it's safest to assume that if I was to return, Hades would realize that his furies hadn't finished the job, and he'd send them after me again. It is, it is wild that this worked. I like. I would love to hear. The one thing we're not allowed to ask here is why he believed this would work, and it's like the only thing I actually want to know. All right, why can't you tell me your name? I fear that if you were to utter my name in the city, even by mistake, that Hades would hear you and know I am still alive. But he can't hear down here because the acoustics in this place are terrible. Where's everyone else? I'm afraid I am the only one left. There were 12 of us in the beginning, but one by one, my friends passed away. Some from malnutrition, others from madness and despair. It has been lonely. Mm -hmm. Before my unexpected visit from Kabash some weeks ago, I had not seen another person in many, many years. You know we're already dead, right? And the, like, there's no reason that there would be a mechanism of mal- Like, how is that even- where do they go when they die? Okay. How have you survived down here? Living in darkness is not without its challenges. The first challenge is diet. Fortunately, I found that eating fresh fish provides most of the nutrients I need. And sometimes, when there are Greek people living up above, I surface at night and salvage the offerings they've left in the temple of Demeter. The greater challenge is the isolation. So I like to imagine arguments where I argue both sides. He really is a debate, but, bro. Like so many things in life, arguments are better with a partner. And for some reason, people like me just can't seem to keep any of those. Weird. I especially love he's like, yeah, listen, that guy did kill me, but that means I won the argument. <laughs> it's very, very much within this uh, sort of narrow character. All right, let's talk about something else. As you wish. Uh, no, never mind. I mean, I guess I'll be going now. I enjoyed our chat, but please keep my presence here a secret. Yes. Uh, yep, sure. It is interesting that you have the option of like suggesting that you won't do that. I wonder what the what the use of that is. So we reckon we reckon dude's gonna be mad. Is it a good idea to like the thing is we've already we've already upset Claudia in such a way that she will not talk to us anymore. But I wonder if that necessarily like it did not seem to me like any of the other options with Claudia should have made her help us more than the one that we did choose. So I wonder if you always dead end that conversation there, but then once you know that the letter exists... <sighs> Basically, I don't want to save the game in a position where the loop is doomed and I would have to start a new loop and then redo all of this, you know? But I guess I, guess I wouldn't have to redo all of this if I get the plaque, because the the actual progress that we're making here is in the form of physical objects, which we hold on to between loops. So yeah, okay. I am gonna be very annoyed though, if I have to rebuild a bunch of the progress that we made next loop in an attempt to try to get to the election outcome that we want. Must be one of the Philosopher's 11 friends who he outlived, despite the fact that there is absolutely no reason that they should be able to die. Like, what does it mean if you get brought to the underworld and then in the underworld you die of old age? Again, it does it does sort of feel like maybe some of this was written for a different premise and then it just got like ported over. I 
I haven't been using the flashlight because it's been light enough to, to see everything we actually need to see, but also, I guess, um, I guess we could turn it on. Really, what I was doing there was I was thinking, should I have my bow out? And then because I was thinking about my bow, I remembered the flashlight. Because if this dude's going to greet us uh, violently, feels like we should be uh, perhaps prepared for a thing to occur. Even more arrows. I have so many arrows now. An Egyptian clay vase decorated with animals and geometric patterns. It now contains nothing but sand. So, uh, by the way... This is the thing that I was told about that I thought was interesting enough that that it made me kind of curious to play the game. That it turns out the city is built on top of a different older city, and I was like, okay, I'm actually I'm pretty I'm pretty curious how they managed that. Nothing really. Hmm. So I thought I heard the heads of some of the other statues down here turn. So I mean that's got to be that's got to be this the actual city down there. Does this open? Seems to be locked from the other side, and we can't quite see anything meaningful through it. All right, well. Okay. That doesn't look like our dude. That looks like some Ray Harryhausen noise going on over there. I'm just gonna uh, step to the side. process of putting away the oh you're like really booking it uh, but in sort of a confused way swing and a miss okay you don't seem to be able to path here Okay, hard to do headshots in the dark. Can I get my arrows back? No, that's fine. I have plenty of arrows. Oh, he got underneath me. Interesting, it says golden statue. I guess I didn't. I do believe there's another one behind us. So it seems like a headshot brings him down instantly. Okay, so there's like a there's an upward arc. I have to dial in the the amount that she's going to miss the crosshair by. So this is the part where if you had a gun, it would be neat. It's, in it's interesting that it says golden statue, and they're clearly like they're getting up from being golden statues, but they don't look much like the other statues around here, where like most of them are most of them are preserved human bodies, and those ones look all emaciated and very curious about the process that leads to a person getting turned to gold in such a way that they get back up afterward? What did, what did Pluto get bored partway through and just like not finish it or hi Unfortunately, I don't know enough about um like clothing to be able to look at the clothing on these like obviously I can work with an Anubis, but I can't look at a person in a garb and be like, "Aha, this was definitely Egyptian." An Egyptian plaque which translates to the many shall suffer for the sins of the one. Does it though? So which part of that involves a bird? 
Many birds shall suffer for the sins of one bird, but it's us. We're the bird. The board for an ancient game called Senate, the rules for which are long forgotten. Okay. This one, this one I know is Egyptian. Well, this seems dangerous. So with the way the, um, the way the, the gold zombies actually attack us, and the, the fact that we're allowed to just kick them away, it seems like I really shouldn't ever take damage from them if I'm facing them. Because, like, they move up to you, and you get a really long time to react. All right, let me just make sure that I'm not missing anything else. Like, do any of these side buildings? That's not going to open. That's not going to open. Can we get on top of these? No. That's, that's arrows. I probably, probably could stand to take some arrows. Yep, okay, I guess let's just keep moving on. A statue of Aker, an ancient Egyptian deity said to guard against evil spirits and welcome the dead to the underworld. Well, you're doing a great job there, buddy. Keep it up. Are any of you the kind that I need to shoot at? Doesn't look like it. Also, why can I even read this? It could be because I'm an archaeologist, but it doesn't say archaeologist insight on it. I bet you can do this no matter which background you picked. Oh, hey, it's our dude. Yep, how you doing? Are, you, are we cool? Are you going to be cool? Stop. Do not come any closer. Who are you? That's relatively cool. He didn't immediately attack me. Uh, I will offer it up. Hi, I'm Samhain. Who are you? I am Kabash. Hmm. And let me guess. Another Greek or Roman come to loot and plunder the resting place of my ancestors. Hmm? Uh, I am actually just looking for an Egyptian plaque. Hey, hold on. Do I look Greek or Roman to you? Hmm. Trousers, boots, curious here. No, I suppose you do not. Then what do you want? I'm just looking for an Egyptian plaque. I'm hoping that this has dispelled some of his distrust. Hmm. To what end? I want to return it to the obelisk. Hmm. That is welcome news. Okay, good. You really are not Greek or Roman, are you? I was planning to return it myself. But for now, I must remain. Here, Why? take it and restore the honor of Osiris. Uh, okay. Thanks. Now, as for the other plaque. Yeah, the fourth plaque. You know about that? Indeed. I have it right here. I stumbled across a collection of dusty curiosities while searching for a place to hide from the hungry children of Amit. And there it was. Please just be a license plate. May, may I have it? You may not. In fact, I am about to destroy it. Okay, why though? Because it speaks a treacherous, blasphemous lie. Well, now, I am very curious about that. How am I allowed to be a jerk to this guy about not getting to the point? What, what do you mean? How so? I will tell you. But first, do you know what this place is? Uh, the Duat, obviously. Indeed. And I see you know our history. This is the Duat. See what has become of it. I have been down here for weeks piecing together its story. And here is what I have learned. As Egypt declined and the Greeks had their turn to flourish, their souls came here in great numbers. But instead of adopting our ways, they copied and corrupted them. When they found the obelisk bearing the name Osiris, the true god of the underworld, they desecrated it 
removing his name and replacing it with <sighs> Hades. Even the ferryman of the dead, known to my people long before as Kerti, they renamed to Keron. As if that desecration was not enough, they built over this place, using it as the foundation for their own underworld, so that ours was forgotten. Hmm. <laughs> My only solace is that the Greeks then suffered the same fate when the Romans rose to power, renaming Hades to Pluto, and the cycle began anew. Yeah, it's great when bad things happen to other people. Uh, so what's the problem with this plaque exactly? It is inscribed with a script I do not recognize, but it is ancient, almost as if it is older than the plaque bearing Osiris's name. But if that is so, it would imply the gods of Egypt are mere imitations too, copied and corrupted from an ancient people who prospered even before us, and that my people did to them what the Greeks and Romans did to us. But this, I cannot accept. I sense a deception. Perhaps it is the work of Set, the usurper, seeking to undermine Osiris once more. Uh, yeah, that's sure. That's probably what's happening. What does the inscription say? You will never know. Darn. This work of sacrilege must be destroyed, thrown into the black abyss below in Osiris's name. Wait, there's a black abyss down there? That's very curious. Um, hmm. So, I mean, please don't and stop I need that are both going to be responded to by him not even answering us, just throwing the thing in, in there. Right. But do it and I do it and I'll kill you. Like, there's no there's no reason that any of this stuff would have any effect on the situation at all, right? I feel like that's that's the case with a lot of the apparent choices we're given in dialogue in this game. Like it always feels like we could just click a blank button and the conversation would just go on without us. Uh, I guess I'm going to ask nicely. You are too late. Okay. That's it what is I figured. done. Okay. Well, I do wish that you had not done that. It could not have gone any other way. It was Osiris's will. Now, the thing of evil you sought is gone. Why are you still here? Well, because now I gotta go down there, because Osiris is not the boss of me. What do you think is down there? I do not know. What could possibly lie beneath the underworld? Perhaps it is infinite darkness. Perhaps it is the lair of Amit, the devourer of souls. All I know is... It would be unwise to venture down there. Well, that just makes you want to go down there even more. Is everyone so contrary where you are from? Yes. Do not even consider it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's no point in asking these questions. I know what I gotta do. Good. I'm, I'm done with be you. Got Wait. Yes, you I am gonna do plan. that. You're right. Definitely. You would plunge into the depths of the Duat with no way back up. Madness. It's not any weirder than the thing I did when I came down here. Hmm. We shall see. Okay, he's not gonna, like, make a thing of it. I thought we were gonna have to fight him about it. Yeah, sure. A Sumerian plaque. I was really... Yeah, it's in cuneiform. Um, that's not how cuneiform is usually spelled. Nergal, the fierce one. Cool. I love, I love a good, I love a good Nergal. I was really hoping it was going to be something modern and the game's contention was going to be the history is cyclical. <laughs> At least that would be like a, f a fun way for this to go, right? Okay, so who knows stuff about ancient Sumer? Spoilers, not me so much. Uh, well, I mean, I guess I should stop here. I guess this is where the episode ends. Uh, yeah, this was a lively one. Some things have, have transpired. Some doings have occurred. But we are out of time for today. Thank you all so much for watching. When you come back next time, I'm going to arm wrestle an ancient Sumerian god or something. And listen... 
Nobody can predict it. It's just going to keep getting weirder from here, I hope. Come back next time to find out if that's true, and we'll see you then.